Well, let's find out more about how bonds are moving in anticipation of this big event. Because 9.45 Eastern Australian time, at least, is when we'll get the news. Simon Michelle from Fig Securities joining us now with more. Simon, um, in, just in terms of the way yields have been behaving, I mean, just continuing to move higher in anticipation of this ECB action? That's right. So we saw that tremendous rally uh, sort of up until the end of last week where yields hit all-time lows both here and in the US. Um, that's been reversed. A bit of volatility hitting the markets as uh, we've gone a bit quiet in anticipation of that ECB action. Um, obviously the European Central Bank did indicate at their last meeting that they would take steps this, this month which is why uh, everyone's uh, waiting eagerly. Um, a little bit of uh, speculation about you know just how far they'll take it. You mentioned that uh, earlier. Obviously we're expecting a drop in the refinance rate, whether they also then bring the deposit rate into negative territory, whether there's a long-term uh, refinancing operation, uh, you know, that'll be interesting to see uh, just how far they, or what tools they use at their disposal to try and stimulate that uh, European economy. Just in terms particularly of the, uh, the action there, I mean, the actual What's expected? What, what's the view? Well, definitely expecting a drop in the refinance rate. So that's obviously the, the rate at which banks can borrow money from the ECB. So they, that, that's definitely going to fall. Um, whether they bring the deposit rate into negative territory, you know, I'm not quite so sure. It's there at zero at the moment. Uh, I think definitely in relation to some sort of stimulus, whether that's an asset buying stimulus, where they're actually buying assets from banks and uh, providing money into the economy that way, or whether they enter into a, uh, you know, LTRO, long-term refinance operation which is essentially essentially allowing banks to lend for a very very long period of time at very very low rates um, so both of those obviously will provide more cash into the system it's about how the banks use that uh, you know what we want to see uh, over there is the banks putting that money to use lending uh, stimulating growth credit uh, through the economy not hauling it uh, in relation to capital requirements and just on the case the, the US data as well that we're also waiting for I mean is this going to play second fiddle do you think this week given the importance of the, the ECB? It's interesting, you know, I looked at the movement in both our Australian 10-year uh, Australian Commonwealth Government rate and the US. Both yield curves are for about 15 basis points. So I think that's a pretty sort of global reaction. And, and I think, you know, that volatility is in the lead up to the ECB. I think all eyes will be on the ECB, uh, you know, unless we get some massive surprise out of the US data, which is certainly not expected. I think the big news for the US uh, into next week will be the unemployment rate. That's expected to kick back up a touch. Uh, and we've also got our unemployment rate coming through. So that's going to be more focused on the consumer side of it. Uh, you know, we've had some good, strong GDP figures here, then the trade balance uh, data out today. You know, what they're showing us as a bigger picture is really that, you know, uh, we've been riding on the strength of the mining sector. Uh, you know, consumer growth hasn't been as strong. Uh, you know, how is that going to uh, flow into the future uh, in relation to GDP? And, uh, you know, most uh, market uh, commentators believe it'll be much softer. Just um, finally, of course, in terms of issuance, I mean, are you getting the sense that um, that uh, has been quite strong? Look, very strong. And, uh, you know, I think red yields hit all-time lows. Uh, you know, not so good for the investor, but, geez, it's great for people that want to borrow money. And uh, we've seen a lot of corporates come out to the market and top up existing issues, uh, launch new issues, both here in Australia, also through the European market and in the US market, both uh, very high credit quality issuers and the uh, non-investment grade issuers. Uh, we're seeing a huge uh, development in the high-yield bond market with NAB issuing a uh, high yield bond or unrated bond this week so you know it's really uh, providing a wonderful uh, opportunity for uh, companies and new issuers to come to the market and uh, lock in some long-term low rate uh, borrowings any in particular that you like Look, I, I think there's been a real diverse. I mean, uh, you know, I, obviously Qantas has been out twice in the last month. Uh, you know, they've managed to get a lot of money away. That's great. Uh, we saw an Abbott Point coal terminal uh, fixed rate last week uh, come out $100 million for that. You know, there's whatever you fancy, uh, there's pretty much some opportunity there. So, uh, look, I think uh, from my perspective, I like the fact that we're seeing this huge development and this huge growth in the uh, amount of issuance out there. It's great for the issuers, obviously, but it's great for investors because they get diversification. They get an opportunity to invest in these companies at another point apart from at the uh, share level. Simon, really appreciate your time. Thank you for that. Have a good day. Simon Michelle there from Fig Securities. Coming up on Trading Day, do women get a